Hello everyone, welcome to my studio for another watercolor lesson. Today we are going to paint these daisies. We'll talk about color choices and supplies and composition. I'll also show you how I painted the background and demonstrate a variety of watercolor techniques. Just so you know, this video was originally shot as a live stream on my Facebook page, so you may hear me chatting with my students. I'd love it if you could just jump right in and paint along with us. So let's get started. We're all uh, locked up in our homes um, and uh, staying home um, because of coronavirus, COVID-19, and yet we can still hang out together and paint, so I think it's great. And um, we are going to paint a, um, we're going to paint this reference image today, and this is, uh, these are daisies. I think so. I'm pretty sure they're daisies. I am not a flower aficionado. In fact, I'm really ignorant about flowers. However, I like to paint flowers. Why? Not not because I'm, you know, I, I'm not, again, a real, um, I'm not really experienced with growing flowers or anything, but I like to paint them because they are fairly easy to paint. And I think they're a really good subject matter for beginners um, when learning to paint because uh, unlike painting people or animals or things it's like you know a flower doesn't have a predefined uh, shape or or whatever like you, you try to paint a person and you know oh there's something wrong with that it doesn't look like a person with flowers you can be a little bit more loose and I think that's why they're a good place to start and on this particular one I chose these today because I wanted to practice a couple things one retaining whites because in watercolor um, the only white you have is the white of the paper and so if you're going to have white areas and we have plenty of white areas in this picture you have to figure out ahead of time plan ahead of time how you're going to keep those whites by not painting in those areas and so that's going to take what we call negative painting to make that happen uh, ne painting negative shapes so the areas of the green and yellowish background um, are going to uh, going to create the shape of the white daisies because we're going to paint those negative shapes around them in those those green and yellow colors and then the um, the daisies will pop out um, now white is funny when we paint white white is not usually perfectly white there are some areas in this painting because it's a little bit overexposed that look they're just white white just perfect white but we're gonna we're gonna have some areas that are completely white in our paper but not we're also going to use blues and maybe even some red, pink in there because there are lots of other colors in um, the color white. Okay, And so you have to look closely and see what other colors do I see in that white area that, um, that are not pure white. And so obviously in the shadow areas there's obvious uh, kind of a bluish purple color and um, in various areas and we'll accentuate that a little bit more. One other thing I want to say about the reference picture before we get started is we're also, I'm, I'm going to show you in a minute how I traced this out, but we're only going to focus really clearly on these front two daisies, the one right in the center and the one um, that's to the left of it in the lower left corner. And the other ones we're going uh, in the background or we're, we're going to treat them as fuzzy background undefined. There'll still be some areas of whitish, uh, light, light colors, and maybe some of those little yellow-orange um, centers will be visible, but I'm not, they're not even going to be as visible as they are in this picture. That partly because I think as far as a composition, this is hard to paint because these white masses of flower kind of all flow into each other. You can't almost see where one flower starts and one ends. And I think that might be hard to, especially for beginning painters, um, I'm already including myself in that, um, to capture that. So we're going to de-emphasize the background flowers and only emphasize the front two. Does that make sense? Um, let me show you. I was actually, I'm going to switch now here. I was actually working with a practice image. In fact, I've done this a couple times. Um, yesterday I was out and about. Um, and I uh, actually helped a friend move to Pullman this last few days, so uh, I had to drive across the state. So I was out, and uh, I went ahead and uh, just 
in my car actually <laughs> I stopped took a break and painted this. this this was kind of what I was trying to go for this is super simplified right um, I've got uh, the one flower and you can see how I kept it white and just painted negative painting around it and um, I use actually more of a blue and pink I just decided you know what's the contrasting color to um, kind of to this yellow center and well blue is a contrast contrasting color to yellow um, really purple is completely but um, so I, I thought well gosh maybe I'll put that blue in there instead blue would be the color of the sky and all and so I kinda like how this turned out it was just a study um, and I did that and then today in preparation for today I thought well no I'm gonna work with this composition that we have going for today and try to do that so you can, if you can see I'm not sure you can see but this and this flower are the ones that I'm emphasizing and those I traced out quite more darkly um, and uh, with more emphasis and then the other ones in the background I kinda just took my pencil and kinda drew a really abstracty kinda outlined the shapes and I even ignored there was a flower right back in here and I ignored that because again um, when you're painting or you're creating composition you always want to create really strong contrasty areas between the lightest areas of your flower or the lightest areas of your subject and the dark areas because your eye is drawn to that and so I didn't want too many white masses behind these two main flowers I wanted there to be other darker colors um, and so I, I and this is just the first wash I just took like 10 minutes uh, before class and did this really quickly it's not done obviously um, but just kind of see where I'm gonna go and um, yeah so and I also don't always paint right out to the edge I like to keep some white in the paper I think watercolor uh, yeah lends itself to that you can paint all the way to the edge if you want so however you traced your images on your paper doesn't matter um, but we're gonna this is kinda what I'm thinking I'm gonna emphasize these two flowers only okay um, I suggested that you paint fairly small now again if you've already started and it's on a bigger piece of paper that's fine why do I suggest you paint small it's easier to paint small especially when you're beginning and I and and um, the larger the format the harder it is in watercolor because you have to work quick in watercolor you have to attend to the wet areas of your paper before they dry too much and the larger the area <laughs> the, the harder it is to work the, all the areas that you want to work before they start drying and as soon as they start drying then you almost have to let them fully dry before you can go back and do anything and so especially for these lessons I, this is a nine by six okay I have it stuck on a board this is a piece of masonite that I taped down to and um, yeah so there you go uh, it might be nice if I had my a little bit more of my uh oh I'm gonna mess this up here if I move my camera I want you to see a bit more maybe of my um, I don't think I'm going to be able to adjust it now. It's too late now because we're already going. So you can see my palette over here, and I'll be mixing my colors in here. Okay. And uh, so, awesome. Uh, the colors I'm going to use, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, I also took um, some time to uh, test some colors that I thought might work well together. Um, and I've got this new color. It's actually a green gold. It's actually what it's called. It's a Daniel Smith color, and it's called um, green gold. And it's this color here. It's up in the this color, and, and it can go a little darker. It's it's really a beautiful color. I just got it actually, so I was pretty excited to try it. Um, and um, it goes on. It's a kind of a greeny color, but then as it lightens, as you add water, it gets. Um, really yellowy which I thought oh that's perfect for this background right it's it's that that kind of thing going on I'm um, gonna also use ultramarine blue which is here uh, it's just your standard blue most palettes most even beginner kits would probably have this kind of color on it and so I've got that now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix that right into this green gold and see what happens there right as you take uh, and just bring them together you end up with a really beautiful um, grayish blue green 
if that's a color. Um, and, you know, again, I just put down some of the ultramarine here to the right and just kind of with water just mix them. And they just have this gorgeous um, blending of the two colors next to each other there. And that's uh, that's great. I think that'll be good for the background. That's how I'm going to create the green. I'm got, I've got another green, too, that I might use some. Um, and that is this um, sap green, which I have up here. And um, if I take that and blend it into this... Um, green gold it's called um, again you're going to get some nice blending there and uh, we'll see how those all to go together to create that background um, some people say you mix your colors on the palette some say they take pure color and mix them on the paper either way is fine uh, gives you different effects doing that but just know that there are different ways to blend your colors um, and then I do have what's called new gamboge which is this over here you might call it an orangey yellow um, and I just needed that because we've got these really bright centers okay, to the center of the flowers and we that's going to be a nice beautiful strong cast, contrasting color or a pop accent color so I wanted I've got that and um, I might take a little bit of this red over here this red is quinacridone red and I might take that and, and blend it in to that new gamboge orange yellow color which will push it even um, further into a kind of an orangey color we'll see how that goes I didn't really test that one very one very much beforehand um, but uh, we're going to kind of create some um, shadows on the bottom side of those orange centers so we're going to need something darker okay so those are my colors so basically you may not have the colors I have I don't expect that you do um, but kind of some kind of yellowy green, a regular green, a blue, and an orangey kind of color, maybe a little red. I say this in every one of my videos, limit your color palette. Don't pull out all 24 colors that you bought in your palette and try to use them all. It will end up in a really disunified, um, jumbly mess of colors um, when you do that. And so I basically ha I have five colors here. Um, and I, my rule of thumb, I heard somebody teach this once, and so I tend to do it as try to have all three primaries, like blue and yellow, blue and yellow and red. Um, this is kind of my yellow, too. It's a green gold, so it's, you know, I've kind of got two that are in the yellow area, and then um, the blue and the red, and then I could mix the green if I wanted to and not use a, a pure green, but uh, sometimes it's easier just to pick up a little of your sap green and put it in. So, anyways. Um, Hey, Christian. Hi, Christian. Nice to see you. Um, awesome. All right. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start um, and hopefully you have your uh, have your image of your daisies transferred over to some kind of paper. And um, I've, again, uh, traced it on here this is a nine by six piece and I've got these two darker flowers that will emphasize a bit more darker some people are picky they don't like to see pencil lines showing through their paint I don't really worry about that I'm like yeah I think they tend to kind of fade away into the painting once you really um, by the time you finish the painting and you might see the pencil lines a little bit but I just don't worry about it um, okay so I've got clear water in, in at least one of my um, areas uh, in my typically you should have at least two containers of water you should have one that you clean your brush out with which will get dirty really quick and you should retain one to be pretty clear because there are times like right now where you're going to want to um, come in and, and put in clear water so that's what I'm going to do now I am actually going to paint right these flowers that are in the background the ones I said were going to be fuzzy background I'm actually going to put wet uh, I'm going to put water right over all, all of those. I'm going to paint right over them, not trying to retain the edges of, um, of those. Now this takes a little bit, um, but you really want to get your paper um, pretty wet, but not all over. I'm not, I am retaining, I'm, I'm not putting any water where the white of the two primary daisies are. Okay. I'm also not putting water right out to the edge. 
uh, of the paper uh, to the tape. I'm um, so it's, it's, it just takes a while. Now it's a combination which size brush to use right here, right? It's like well a bigger brush will help you move faster because it retains more water, but it has a bigger tip, so it's harder to get into these tight little areas. Um, and um, oh well, kind of pick the one that seems good for you. Um, again, I'm painting over these ones that are in the upper right corner. I'm not going to try and paint around those. Aren't you glad? Painting around all of these would take forever. Um, so I'm only trying to retain white dry areas uh, around the two primary daisies. Did I say that already? I think I did. Okay. That's okay. Repetition. I'm a teacher. Right, Andrea? We've got to say things multiple times to our students. Um, I don't, can't decide whether I'm going to keep the little stem areas wet. I mean, sorry, keep them dry or not. I guess I'm kind of keeping them dry. The stems of the two main daisies. And um, you might have to go back. I'm doing that, as you notice. I'm, I'm kind of going back over some of these areas and making sure, now that I've painted around them carefully, I'm going around to make sure that they're it's pretty wet, evenly damp, wet, not just damp, wet, glossy wet in the areas that I want to paint this yellow gold green background. Why should it be evenly wet? Well, because you'll notice in a second, as soon as you start putting paint in it, um, it'll start flowing and you kind of want it to flow evenly through that and any area that's um, already become dry and it actually dries out pretty quickly. Um, how do you know if the paper is drying out? Well you'll look at it and see how glossy it is and the watercolor artist is something that's not very obvious to beginners. The, the watercolor artists are doing this all the time. They are gauging the wetness of the paper and the amount of water um, I'm uh, on the brush and the kind of relationship to the two. There's kind of science involved in that. Okay, so I'm mixing up green gold and I don't want it to be too dark so I'm putting a fair bit of water in here and now is the moment of truth. I'm going to start to drop the green gold and I'm kind of avoiding the... Now, first of all, the water, the color will only flow where there's water. So that's why we retained dryness um, on our main two flowers because the water just won't go there unless yeah they just won't you know I have my, my paper at a slight angle um, it's, it's on a tripod at a slight angle almost flat but not quite just like 20 percent angle maybe um, and this is where it gets challenging for me to talk and paint at the same time. Okay, um, so I've put down green gold, but now the background is not a solid green gold by any means. There's a lot of other colors in here. So I'm going to come and grab some of my ultramarine blue, again a very light wash of it, and I look in my reference picture and I kind of see where there might be nice to put in green. Now I'm doing this really sloppy, right? I kind of am retaining the white areas on those background flowers in the sense I'm not painting entirely over those areas, but I'm really not worried about, and I'm also not going completely to the edge. Uh, I'm going to grab a little bit more ultramarine, mix it so it's a little bit more blue, drop it in here. There's really dark areas over on this left, sorry, yeah, lower left corner. I'm going to do that. I'm thinking about just big areas of color at this point. I'm not thinking about detail, not for a second. Um, I see something here. There's also, I think I could get a little bit, I might even use a slightly brighter, smaller brush, but um, I'm kind of going to put a little bit darker. Maybe blue wasn't the best choice. Maybe I'm going to go back and grab a little bit of that green. And again, I'm only going in these background areas that were 
and I'm kind of putting in uh, something to represent those stems, okay? Because they they stand out as being dark. Um, now you might be saying to yourself, "Wow, that looks really dark. Is, is it going to dry that dark?" No, it's going to dry really, really uh, much lighter than what you see. Um, and so this is this is a quite of a just a light wash. Typically, artists will watercolor artists will do an initial wash that covers most, if not all, if, of the paper. What they're doing in that first wash, however, is they are um, retaining the white areas, retaining the white. So that's what we really did on these two flowers in the center. Okay. One other thing I see in the background, um, those that I do want to do, is I'm going to get a little of my, my, what's called gamboge, my orangey yellow, we'll just call it that, because um, you had a, a greeny yellow and an orangey yellow. Um, and I'm going to go in here, and with a fairly large brush, this is a wet, I'm just going to drop some of that into these flowers that are in the background, right? Because, again, I have a lot of water on the paper in those areas at this point. And so whatever I drop in there is going to spread, okay? And it's going to be very diffuse. It's going to be very um, not well defined. And so I just went one, bink, 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 four places. Now I'm not doing the orangey in the center of the two main flowers yet um, because I, again, I'm just focusing on the background right now. You can come back if there's too much water. You can pick up some of this with what you do. You're not maybe seeing me on camera doing this, but almost every time before I hit the paper with my brush, I am drawing it out on a piece. I have water. Uh, what's it called? Um, paper towel in my hand here. I've also got a. Um, can't see it here very well, but I also have a towel sitting on the table, and I. I I also tend to get rid of the color, or sorry, the water off the brush there. Um, so I'm drying off the brush right now, getting rid of that water, and then I'm going back in. I might pick up some water where there's like beads of water. Again, my paper's at a slight angle, so everything's flowing down. Um, and, you know, you can leave those. They'll dry eventually, um, those beads of water, or you can try to pick them up. Um, okay. So I've kind of done my background wash. Okay. Uh, well, let's talk about supplies a little bit while we wait for this to dry. Um, I do typically have a hair dryer <laughs> with me. Okay. Now you might not have that. Uh, you didn't know you were supposed to have that. And um, but I might at times, if I don't, if I'm impatient, which is a lot of the time, uh, might say, "Oh, I want, I want to speed this drying process up. I'm done with the wash." And I'm, I can't go any further, really, until I get this to dry. And so um, I pull, you know, go ahead and dry and just take, you know, take 30 seconds and, and dry it. And then it'll dry pretty quick. Uh, or you can let it dry naturally. Some people think you should just let it dry naturally. But for the sake of an hour-long lesson on, on Facebook, I kind of need it to dry. So I'm going to do that. Um, also, I'm using, just so you know, I'm using... Um, 100% cotton paper. Again, you may not have that. That's not something everybody has lying around. Um, but that is the best water. Almost all watercolor artists will tell you that the paper is the most important part of your set of supplies. And if you using 100% cotton is the best because it totally reacts different to the paint, to the water than paper that has pulp in it, made out of wood. And so. Um, if you can get uh, watercolor paper, it's best, 100% cotton. And um, so there you go. I'm going to dry this up a just a little bit. If you have a hair dryer, you could grab it and do the same.
you're going to know that it's dry enough to proceed. I don't know if you can hear me or not while this is going. Um, you'll know that it's dry enough to proceed when you touch it, and it really feels, it doesn't feel cold anymore, the wetness, uh, the coldness of the water, and um, it just feels dry. Okay, if I weren't doing this on video, I might go a little longer and get it perfectly dry. I think it's pretty close, though. Um, so, and just another thing that I do, just to reference this here. I usually have this reference image open on my tablet, so I can see the true colors that I'm going for, and I just have that off camera. So, uh, if you have, that's a, a nice thing to have um, with you. So then you don't have to print it out on paper necessarily, and it probably you get a better sense of the colors. Uh, so it's dry now, and you can see, hopefully in yours, you can see how diffused out those colors were. When you first put those orangey ones, colors in the center, um, you know, they looked, they, they, they looked stronger. The color was stronger. Um, but now that it's dry, one, it's much lighter in color, and it just really flowed out into the rest of the flower. So these flowers in the background are no longer white, but again that was my goal. The only two that are super white are the two in the front. Um, and that's going to cause those to become the focus of the painting. Your eye will be drawn there, and the other ones are just kind of a suggestion of a flower, so to speak. Um, Alright, where would I go next with this? Hmm. I think I'm going to go ahead and go right to the center of the flowers and uh, add in the yellow, gold, gold yellow um, color. So I'm going to clean my brush off really well. I'm going to use like a number eight round here so it's not too big. Uh, here's another tri trick in terms of uh, working with your supplies and all. You, you should always use the largest brush you can get away with for an area. So for example, we're going to paint in these areas, this areas of these two flowers. I can maybe get away with a slightly big, bigger brush, but not a whole lot because the area that I'm painting is of a certain size. Um, so why always the largest brush? A lot, um, it, it depends, I guess, on the style of painting you're looking for. I like a more loose and expressionistic kind of approach. And so if I have a little tiny brush and I'm putting down every little stroke uh, like a hairline, I am not going to get a loose and impressionistic <laughs> expressive, uh, or, well it could be expressive, I guess, but it's not going to be a loose impressionist style um, if I'm putting down every little stroke, right, um, as an individual, you know, hairline uh, mark. So I am putting a darker uh, color on these to the left. So I'm putting the color initially, almost a pure pigment, on the left side of these areas, and then I'm paint, getting the water on my brush, cleaning off some of the pigment, and then just pulling the color towards the right. Why? Well, in my opinion, uh, the way I'm viewing this composition is that the light, that well, those that part of the the light's coming from the upper right, I guess. Yeah, I would say it is. You always should determine that before you start painting. The water's coming, the light's coming from the upper right corner this way. And so we see some shadows here under this lower flower. And the, this side, the left side of the orange area, is the darker area. While that's wet, um, I'm going to get mix a little bit of my, my red. And I'm not going to go full on, but I'm just going to mix up a little of that and put that on the lower left side. I'm just dropping it in an area that's already wet. Okay, That's going to flow, give a really cool look um, to it. As much as possible, um, well, I shouldn't say that, but there's so many different techniques, right? But as you're starting out especially, you're putting on washes, and so you're painting wet on wet, so the area, the yellow area of the flower was already wet because I put down this yellow um, and so then I'm dropping in some of the red just to emphasize those sides. Okay. Hmm. All right. What I think I might want to do next, um, I'm going to. I think I'm going. I'm kind of thinking this through as I as I go here. 
Um, I think I want to go back to these background flowers. If I look at those, one way I think that I can make them look like they're in the background, but yet still identify them as flowers, as white flowers, is to paint them with a bit of a blue. So I'm going to um, take pure water, clean water for the most part, I'm going to paint back into those background flowers but just inside the flower shape and again I didn't include all of the flowers in my composition I pretty much did four background flowers whatever you did is fine paint those and then I'm going to take a really light wash of my I don't want any yellow in this, so I have to clean up my palette a little bit. I just want my blue, uh, which again is ultramarine blue in this case. And I'm just going to grab just a little bit of that light, light wash of it. So pigment with a lot of water in it. And I'm kind of looking at my reference image, and I, I'm kind of... painting in these areas that I'm not going to paint the entire area but I'm kind of looking in my reference and saying well I think there's kind of a darkness heat down in under at the bottom of each of these flowers a little bit because they're that again the lights coming from the upper right and um, so I'm gonna put the bluey because the blue will represent the shadow Right, and I'm not right painting in necessarily strokes of color. I'm taking this blue into these areas that I already, and I'm just dropping the blue, just touching. Um, and sometimes with the side of the brush, if you could see what I was doing there, it's like I was with this blue again, a light wash of this blue, and just kind of coming in here and touching in the areas that I want to. And I think that's going to cause it to look like again when we look at white. <laughs> We don't it's really to paint white. You, you you're going to end up painting a lot of blue, sometimes pink or yellow, that are reflected off the white. And so I think that might give us a sense of those colors in the background. That's all I want to do. Really, it's really light, and it's just a suggestion that there's something there. Um, I might though, however, go back with my new my orangey yellow. And again, just emphasize those center because I did it once and it really diffused out, right? And um, you could, to the point you could hardly see it. And so I've got water on there again in those areas. So I'm just taking a little of that color and just dropping it on there, and it's going to spread out into the color. And that's what I want. I don't want a really well defined. Uh, core, you know, background flowers, something like that. Okay, um, so I think next I'm going to look at my stems. What I often am doing as I'm evaluating what I do next is I'm what area is currently dry, what areas are white or wet. So the background little flowers are now wet again, and and I've done what I want to do for this round with them so I'm not going to go back to them. If you go back and mess around m mess around with them too much you're going to um, cause them to, you might get blooms and various things so I'm going to leave that. Now I say what can I do next? Well I think I'm going to do the stems of the some of these flowers. Um, I think I'm going to mix up just some of my sap green which tends to be a really strong color but maybe pull some of my um, ultramarine blue. Now it's a very dark 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 blue green okay and so I'm, I'm just going to touch up some of these areas uh, just I'm just looking at stems right now I look at my reference picture those stems are pretty st strong compositional piece they kind of draw your eye towards the flowers 
the stems in the back are more diffused. The ones in the, the two main flowers are more. So if I want something to be diffused and not have a real strong edge to it, I can come back with white, with water, uh, and just touch up against the color that I put down, which is going to cause it to spread out. I think I might go back. And I don't want this flower, the two main flowers, I want them to be dark, that to be a pretty dark green, so I'm taking some of my blue and sticking it on there. Um, blue mixed in with the green is going to make that green a lot darker, almost black. Okay, something like that. Hmm. Okay, so we've done a lot of wet on wet at this point, but I think what I want to do next is do a little a little really light glazing um, and I'm gonna do a dry uh, a wet on dry so what do I mean by that that means <laughs> wet meaning the brush on dry paper so you can either paint wet on wet so the paper like we did in the background paper was already wet we put down wet paint um, or you can and, and very, there's variations of how wet the paper is how wet the brush okay so there's kind of on a, a gradient um, but I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna take a little bit, a really light wash of my blue again, my ultramarine blue, and I'm trying to keep my my yellow from getting in it because I do not want green. Um, and I think I'm gonna look at for some areas on my two main flowers that are bluey color um, because of shadow. And I'm gonna just go ahead and with my number eight brush, I'm just gonna put that blue in there and I see one there and I see one there and I may, I'm just doing these in single strokes right? I'm just I'm not really again messing around a lot oops that bled into the next area but that's okay mistakes are your friends sometimes Bob Ross happy mistakes or something like that is that what he says everybody quotes him um, I'm gonna come up in here I see there I'm not going around every single petal by any means. I'm seeing where it looks like there's shadow or and there's definitely a lot on the of that going on over here on the left flower because it's a little bit underneath the other flower which is casting its shadow. And so I've got that and I've got some things going on like this. So again, we have this um, we have this white mass, which is the flower, is the petal, white petal. But we have to it has to it has to be more than just white mass there. There has to be, um, yeah, we have to get some differentiation to the shapes. And so we're going to do that with a little bit of this blue wash. Very light. If, I don't even know. Can you see it very well on the camera? Um, I'm, I'm doing it very light. And um, and it, it'll even dry lighter than what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm kind of taking a little artistic license here because some of these, again, this is so washed out in some ways that in the picture that I think there could be some areas here that could use a little more defining that are not really in the picture. I mean, I don't see blue in all these places. I'm just kind of thinking, hmm, where could this use this? I think to the bottom left of each of those yellow centers, there's going to be a bit of a shadow that gets cast if the light's coming from the upper right corner. That would be natural, right? So we would think about that. Something like that. I have to admit, this is a, it's a little bit terrifying to paint live, right, in front of a bunch of people. Thankfully, there's actually not that many people here today. <laughs> Fewer than I've had in my other ones, um, <laughs> which is okay by me. Um, just because, you know, it's like, oh, is this going to turn out? I don't really know. I don't really know. It's okay. I would say for every, I don't know, I'd say for every five paintings I do, I've got a whole bunch of paintings in my studio here that the world has never seen um, because I just didn't like them and so I didn't want to share them and um, yeah so there you go and um, 
Now, it might not look quite yet. Um, so all that to say, you have to paint. Uh, you have to paint a lot. You have to paint over and over and over again. You may not like a lot of your work. Don't give up. Just try again. Just try again. Just try again. Okay. So not all my paintings turn out. I'm not happy with them. Um, many and many. That's actually more more often true than not. Okay. That's all I'm trying to say. All right. So I'm looking at this. Um, I kind of want to not do any more with those blue areas at this point. I kind of want them to dry because they're going to dry lighter than what I see right now. Um, I think I could though, I think my backgrounds up here, these background flowers are pretty dry and so I might just emphasize at the bottom of those some extra dark again because I, I know that there's going to be like a shadow. They might still be a little too wet. You have to be careful going back into areas that are just, on, they're, it's called the danger zone in watercolor when the paper is kind of dry, um, but not really, because you can get these what are called blooms, okay, where, yeah, you get a watermark basically is what it is. So that's why it's usually good to just leave it alone, okay, until it's completely dry before you go back. Okay, another thing I think we could do, because the center of those flowers is pretty, I'm going to go back with another um, application of my orangey yellow in the center. And uh, now this is when you go and apply another wet on dry uh, in an area that already has color. This is called glazing. You're putting down another layer of, of paint and um, yeah and I kind of almost wanted to do that while that area that was blue in here was still a little bit wet so it might pull that in there it's doing it a little bit it's probably hard to see on the camera but those types of little details uh, are the magic when you have one color come up next to another and it just kind of pull they blend like magic um, yeah, so that yellow area is wet now, and again, what I was doing earlier, and I'm going to do it again, take a little bit of that one red that I have and mix up kind of an orangey, a little more of an orange color, and just drop it in here. And just I want to get some differentiation in the center parts. And I'm only again doing this on the two that are the center, my two primary flowers. I like what's happening on this one. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to let those dry too. Um, at this point, I would be maybe when I would uh, get out my hair dryer again and um, and just really dry it possibly or then again I could say oh I think I'll go back and do this it's um, the process for me painting it's, it takes me a while I, I uh, look at something and do a little something or other and then um, go away and I see I never really got this little stem back here, so I'm doing it really light. Just a hint. The see-through nature of watercolor is its probably most beautiful quality. So you don't, so you putting down layer of transparent layer after another after another is where you start to get these gorgeous combinations and they're all see-through. You see a color behind another color and that's what we're aiming at here. It's actually you have to be pretty patient. I think in watercolor, it's uh, it's not. I think I where I've gone wrong sometimes is thinking, oh, I'm gonna just paint this really quick, you know. And it's like, man, it doesn't. I don't know. I I tend to have more frustrating results than if I slow down. I think it's a meditative thing. It really is. Um, for me, you know, um, as a Christian, you know, it's the idea of meditating on something and. Oh, I think this is actually like that for me. It really is very, very much like that. So it has spiritual quality. I'm going to turn, I'm going to dry this a bit.
Okay, I don't want to have the majority of my video be my watercolor, I mean my hair dryer running. Can you, I don't know if you can see this, if it's if it's still focusing okay on the camera. Um, I really like uh, what's happening in here and in here. It's what you see going on there is you see kind of it goes from being a really hard edge where the orange and the yellow are combining and then it's it, it to a soft edge and th those are the kinds of cool effects you can get with watercolor and as you start to learn how to do that with the paint you can kind of practice the techniques that let you go hard, hard edge uh, and then it turns into a soft edge and that just happens when you come back where you put down some color and you soften the edge with water and that creates really, and then the flowing of this orangey into the blue that was next to it, it's kind of creating some cool, almost greeny colors. And so there's something cool going on there. All right, so I was thinking as I was drawing this, or drawing what I want to do next, I think what I want to do is I actually want to move towards finishing this. <laughs> um, and I think I'm going to do that is I really want to emphasize, I, if you look at this painting yet, right, at this point, these white flowers pretty much fade into the background there's very little high contrast in, in between the white flowers and the background. The background's light and so are the flowers. So we're going to do negative painting next. I'm going to mix up um, just darker values of my yellow gold, my green, my blue. So those three colors. And I'm just going to start to go in negative paint around. Everything's dry at this point. Okay. And so I'm going to paint wet on dry and I'm going to paint right into these areas that emphasize the white of the flower. Okay, And then I'll put down some paint and then I'll take some wet water on my brush and then diffuse the edges of those hearts. So let's just do it, see how it works. So I'm over here, I'm, I'm getting some nice strong colors on my brush. Um, I might I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna work across the paper, so I think I might even work from the left to the right, and that's important. You, you really have to think a lot of these things through before you begin. Okay, so I'm gonna start up here, and I'm just gonna again I'm I'm trying to avoid getting paint in the white. I don't have to be super careful. I mean it's okay if you get a little bit. I'm just gonna I'm taking my green gold, and I'm painting, and this is a sm slightly smaller brush than I used with the first wash, and I'm just gonna go around and start to do what we call negative painting and hopefully that's going to cause those petals. Now I've got some paint laid down. Now before I, I, I gotta go back now before I let this dry too much and I need to soften those edges. I don't want those really so I'm taking pure water on my brush and pulling out. And I'm also going to take some of my green I think that has some of my blue in it and because some of these areas are actually quite a bit darker than that yellow gold. So I'm going to just now, I'm going to lay those other colors where I already, and I'm just going to keep working from left to right and emphasizing, just doing my negative painting all the way around this flower. And again, come back, clean out my brush, soften the edge, pull it into that nice diffused background that I already had. Uh, maybe I like to mix up the color choices and I'm going to go to the blue. I'm not really following the reference at this point. I'm just doing what looks good to my artistic eye. Um, okay, I'm going to go in here. Now I've got a negative paint to the left flower and to the right flower. I've got a big bunch of water on my brush which almost fell onto my painting which would have been fun because it would have left a big mark but I caught it just in time negative painting negative painting negative painting trying to avoid okay and you can already see right um, what's starting to happen here um, uh, the the flowers are starting to jump out at us right negative painting around there and this is where the advantage of working small really comes in. If we were doing this on a big, I don't know, 12 by 18 or something piece of paper, um, and these areas were a lot bigger and stuff, you would have a harder time doing this. Um, so I just kind of, for now anyways, until I get better, kind of gave up on painting very big. Unless I have a lot of time, I guess. Certainly can't do a big painting in an hour. There's no way. I can't even hardly do these paintings 
in the amount of time we have. Um, just drop in dark. I'm really wanting. Now I'm kind of remember there's these other little flowers in the background, so I don't want to paint over them. I can kind of negative paint around them as well. Um, I'm not going to worry about them too much at this point, though. I'm going to just soften out those areas with water. All right, that's good enough. All right, keep going, keep going. Uh, see, if I go back over here where I started, because um, I didn't go all the way around this flower, that edge is already dry. Well, it's dry enough that going back into it is going to be difficult. Um, so I may have to kind of, I just have to be careful. Okay. You kind of have to, you're just looking at shapes right now. You're not really even looking at flowers. Um, And in the background is a whole bunch of just really interesting, just kind of abstracty shapes. They are actually, in, but they're dark. They're pretty dark, right? And so, um, so I'm just putting down. I'm putting a lot of blue into that blue-green mix that I had, and just kind of doing that, and just coming negative painting around this flower. Um, and I keep going back and forth between the three color choices I made for the background, which was yellow green, sap green, and um, oops, I just went into that one background flower because I didn't see it. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Um, and I'm just going back and forth between those colors. If I want it to go a little dark on the background, I take my blue and drop it into the green gold. And if I wanted, uh, oops, I just went right over that little flower. <laughs> I'm obliterating my little background flowers. Oh well, it's okay. Keep telling yourself it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Ooh, I think this is looking kind of cool. Then you stand back and you look at the hole, right? You know, it's like you're working on parts. And you're so focused on the parts <laughs> that then you you don't even see the whole. And that's of course that's part of life, right? It's a lesson for life. I think there's a lot of lessons for life in watercolor painting potentially. Um, okay, what do we like? Step back. Oh, I think I like it. I was nervous about painting in front of you guys, but it's okay. I think it's okay. Um, it's kind of weird. I'm like, it's like, am I just having a conversation with myself, or are there really people out there? <laughs> ah, it's okay. It's going to be recorded too, so um, for people, if people eventually will watch it, maybe. Ooh, okay. How does that look? How does that look? See now, okay. Look, just rewind it like ten minutes, five minutes, and see what it looked like a little while ago, and what it looks like now. Now, do do not be tempted to go back into areas that are already starting to dry. Like in here, I look at that and go, oh, I want to fix that. It's kind of blotchy. But don't leave it. Leave it, leave it, leave it. That's your one of the biggest rookie mistakes, and I, I make it all the time. So, um, but when you have these areas that were wet a few minutes ago, and now they're starting to dry, and you go back in there, and you start trying to fix something, uh, you're going to create a bigger problem. Okay, how's that look? Hmm. And yeah, I kind of tried to go around these other ones, but I wasn't as worried about the negative painting on the little background flowers because again, they were our non-defined splotches. I tried to keep some of that. We remember we had painted a little blue over some of them, and so that makes them look more white against the green that's coming up next to them. And that looks pretty good. Okay, I think we're almost done, which is probably good because it's 10:57. Okay, um, according to my clock. Okay, so wow, that's that's pretty good timing. Um, I think that I might even just stop here and call this a lesson. I, I could go back and um, do more once I'm off the air, and I might. Um, but you know, I might not. I might not. I might just say this was my hour painting lesson, and let's call it good, right? I want to come in here and grab some bluish green dark. Cause I like to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna sign it. You should sign your work. Everyone should sign their work. Yes, you should. 
Um, decide where, an area that's actually going to be in your painting once you crop it. And I, I, I do it pretty light. But, you know, it's your work, and I think you should put your name on it. So I'm, I'm doing that here. Thank you so much for joining me for this watercolor lesson, a painting of white daisies. I hope it was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you will be informed whenever I publish a new video. Take care and keep on painting.